everyone. Thank you for joining another episode of the Leverage Report. I'm joined today by Dan Miner, who is our president and CFO. Yes. We're going to be talking about all things feed referral. And um, Dan, if you don't mind, take a moment and share a little bit about your background and just tell us a little bit about how the feed referral solution can create financial leverage for law firms. Sure. Um, so I started my career as an engineer um, in the aerospace world, then moved into the management consulting space. I'm still a recovering consultant in many ways, um, then moved into uh, the office of the CFO, um, where I joined the Bankrate team. We sold Bankrate to a business called Red Ventures. I settled in to do a handful of operating roles and then joined the legal industry about five years ago. Um, and I, that was my first exposure to litigation financing and, and litigation funding. Um, and, and it's an industry that has changed in the last five years. Um, there's significant growth in the space, um, growing at roughly nine to 10% every year. The expectations growing to a mid $20 billion um, market by, by within the next four or five years. And so huge growing market, a lot of capital coming into the space and it changes the dynamics of, of a law firm. Um, law firms now have the ability to, to produce very large dockets of cases um, because the capital is there to, to support case acquisition. And so when we think about fee deferral, uh, many of these law firms are looking for opportunities to redeploy the cash that they would for case development services back into case acquisition. Um, and the ROI is quite staggering. Um, you know, improvements in ROI of 40 to 50 percent just by instead of paying the, the, the cash fees for case development, you defer those until the time of settlement, take that capital and go generate more cases. Um, and, and it allows the law firms to create some leverage um, and so that, that they get substantial upside when those cases settle. It also turns out to, to be a, a, a benefit to, to the various players in the space. But what it requires is you have to have a partner that's going to be there with you from beginning to end. Um, and that partner is going to, to, to work on those cases to, to get them to a compensable status and then stay in touch with those clients all the way to the end to make sure that those cases ultimately turn into to cash flow for the law firm. And so huge business, the industry is growing and it creates a ton of opportunity as well as leverage for the law firms. Dan, one question that I get a lot is or comments that I hear um, for firms that we're talking to, they, they come to us and they say, um, my cases are just not getting worked. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that their cases are, are not getting worked um, at other providers that potentially offer fee deferral solutions? Yeah, so so one of the challenges with fee deferral is, you know, you're, the, the companies that are offering fee deferral are putting their balance sheet at risk. Um, so they're not going to get paid until the time of case resolution. And so these cases can take three, four, five, unfortunately, sometimes six or seven years until settlement. And so if you're waiting six or seven years till settlement, um, you, you may end up losing money, especially if you have to take out debt capital in order to, to finance that fee deferral solution. And so what ends up happening is many of the players who are offering fee deferral solutions, they're doing it for a small subset of cases, cases that are closer to settlement, cases that are very, very close to, to, to potentially a case resolution. Um, and what it creates is prioritization. Um, and so these these fee deferral solution partners, they're going to prioritize the cases that are near settlement or or potentially um, having settlement conversations over those that may be pre daubert or over those that that may even um, still be very early on in the, the, the case acquisition process. And in the feedback we hear is is consistent across the board. Firms are saying our cases aren't getting worked up. Um, we're not. We don't have a visibility into to what's going on with our cases. Our, our clients aren't being contacted. Um, and many times, it's it's a result of the the vendor or the partner prioritizing those cases that are that are closer to settlement and letting the the cases that aren't so close to settlement kind of sit and molder. Okay. Well, explain that because um, explain balance sheet risk versus how case works. Uh, partners to have a fee deferral solution and how that's different and why we don't have prioritization on working up certain cases. We just treat every case the same and I'm trying to get them across the finish line. Yeah, so we 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 put a lot of a lot of uh, brain power into our fee deferral solution. Uh, we did not want to put our balance sheet at risk. We didn't want to to create this situation where we're trying to to one treat every case as a number. 
Um, where we're try we don't want to have a situation where we're looking at someone as a number and a path to, to get to the next round of cash. Instead, we wanted to treat every life equally. We wanted to treat every case as though it was an injured life that, that we can potentially help. And so our solution does not put our own balance sheet at risk, but we partner with, with third party litigation funders um, to, who will take that risk. Um, and so we are able to then put together a, a fee structure for our fees uh, on a deferred basis, at which point that third party litigation funder will purchase that, that invoice from us so that we're, we're getting paid no matter what, similar to our, our normal process. And then the litigation funder is the one that's actually taking the risk at the time till the time of settlement. And so what that does is it aligns our, our incentives with the corresponding law firm. We're able to work up every case equally. Uh, we're able to, to, to put the, the same amount of effort um, and, and compassion and empathy into the, into the cases that, that are early stage, as well as those that are, are later in the process. Something that I think is very, very different. I think some of the other partners or some of the other vendors in this space, they're going to treat those cases as a number and they're going to look at it as what, what is the time frame to settlement and how do I actually push that case and get records so that we can get that into the settlement um, and turn it into to cash flow so that we can you know, potentially pay down our debt. And let other cases sit. So that I guess that's consistent with the reason why we hear people say that their cases aren't getting worked. Um, and so I guess what um, should firms and attorneys, what are the, some of the questions that they should be asking when they are talking with different groups and about fee deferral solutions? What should they know? Well, I think I think the first is, you know, what other cases are you working on? Um, that's that's the first question. Um, what cases are you working on? Do you have experience? Are you comfortable with with pre Daubert torts? Um, and how are you going to, to fund the, the work? Uh, many of the players, unfortunately, in the legal space, you see many new entrants, um, you see many bad actors, um, new approaches, technologies, capabilities, and they may come and go. And so you want to make sure that that partner is going to be there from beginning all the way until the end. And so are they comfortable with the time frame of the, the tort? Are they comfortable with, with pre-Daubert torts and, and understanding the risk that's associated with them? I think with, with us, one of the things we try to do is treat it as a portfolio. Um, if we're if we apply just simple portfolio theory, we can have some pre daubert torts, we can have um, some later stage torts, and then the, the set of kind of what we know are the torts that are going to settle or have had existing settlements. And so when we provide that that balance across the portfolio, we have a mix of both and or mix of all, which then enables us to, to treat every case equally. Dan, this has been really helpful. Anything else that you want to share? Um, with the with the attorneys about fee deferral and how they can level the, leverage these solutions to drive um, and just create financial leverage for their law firms. Well, I think I think the the other uh, element to consider is when you're deferring fees or when you're deferring costs, it's what can you pass back to the client, um, and it's making sure that that you're putting the structures in place that facilitate that reimbursable expense. Um, and so whether it's modifications to the retainer agreement, whether it is understanding what costs are, are going to be considered reimbursable, and then making sure that, that invoices are itemized to, to, to facilitate or enable that. Um, but, but it's putting a little bit of that effort in up front um, so that you can then pass those costs back on to the plaintiff um, at the, the time of case resolution. At that point, um, it becomes essentially a free loan because the costs then get passed back to the plaintiff. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some work that's done up front, and I think that's where the questions come in of, you know, I, I will pass along the medical record expenses, I'll pass along the filing fees, I may pass along the full case development costs or a portion of the case development costs, and making sure that you've done the, the, the research up front and your retainer agreements also support that. Let's say a firm reaches out and says, okay, I, I want to work with Caseworks. I want the fee deferral solution and we want to work on this tort. From the moment that they indicate interest to actually being able to acquire the case and start working on them, what, what does that process look like? Well, I think first and foremost, we want to understand, you know, what are the types of cases you're going to, you, you, you want to do case development on? What are the cases that you, you want to put into a fee deferral program? Um, then I, we want to understand where are those cases coming from, um, what are the sources, and and how can we help you um, early on in the process. If if we see that those cases aren't converting or they're not necessarily achieving the ROI that you're looking for, we want to provide that early visibility. And so understanding the sources, understanding the expected volumes, understanding the expected fallout rates, 
um, as well as understanding, you know, what are the expectations from a from an overall end to end cost per case? Um, because some of these these cases will have uh, different costs associated with them. Then once we have an understanding of what are your objectives and the goals that you're trying to accomplish with fee deferral, then what we're going to do is uh, work with our third party partners um, to, to put a structure in place that that gives you a proposal on what those fees would be on a cash basis if you just paid as you went, um, as well as what they would be on a deferred basis. And so you then have the ability to do some of that math yourself. We'll walk through a model to show you some of the differences and, and where you may want to put some cases on a fee deferral basis and other cases actually on a cash basis, depending on kind of your, your expectations for the torque. And then finally, we'll, once we've had that proposal conversation, we'll, we'll, we'll get to, to what do we need to do to get started. Some of the integration elements, um, the making sure we have the reporting in place because we want that reporting back to you, but also to our third party funding partners. And I know that um, reporting transparency back to the funding partners is key on a monthly basis and i know you're you, you do that now and so that that's uh we do the legwork and so maybe speak on you know that we know the funders are going to be asking um, for specific um, insight into how the cases are developing but that's not on the firm we, we actually provide that reporting back to them yeah, and, 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 and so the, the great thing about our, our funding partners is they don't want to cross the line and get into PII data and see the, the results of, of these cases. They want to have a pretty good understanding of how are the cases performing, what's going on, where's the fall off, where, where is it not occurring, what, what cases are, are converting to, to full compensable status. Uh, but they're not necessarily looking for the actual medical records or the specifics. They may work with a third party servicer or someone who's going to perform that kind of review and, and, and making sure that these cases have indeed reached these statuses. But, but we provide all that reporting back to them. We give them that visibility into the portfolio, which really alleviates the burden on the, the law firm or the, the law firm itself. It makes it much easier for the law firm experience because we're taking that burden for them. Perfect. Well, this has been great. It's Fee Deferral 101, um, giving the insights. And um, we appreciate you taking time to share that with us. And um, we'll talk soon.